the PRO of the Electoral Commission. It's day three of the compilation of the new voters register. It's been fraught with a number of challenges, but at the same time, there have been some good news as well. And the EC is saying that they have done well in managing the safety protocols at the registration centers. Is that really true? Let's speak to the PRO and find out. Uh, we have Madame Sylvia Anno on with us. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. And, and thank you for joining me. us this morning. All right. Now, first of all, I want to thank find you. out so far is day three, but I just want to know how many people nationwide uh, have registered so far? Um, I, I may have to give you that figure probably in the afternoon. Okay. But let me, let me say that it's been quite encouraging. Okay. You know, it tells you how far um, our publicity has gone. And I can assure you that um, going forward, things can only get better. Things will get better. Definitely. Um, okay. Things, yes. We, we, day one, um, looking at the larger picture, uh, it was good. Mm. But it, it was better yesterday. And we just want to believe that um, it will continue to improve. Mm. You know, I'm talking about the conduct of the registration exercise. Okay. The, yeah. But, but we all are aware are, of some challenges, um, you know, that have been reported largely by the media, especially uh, the non-adherence to social distancing protocols. I remember the first um, statement that came from the EC. It indicated that there was a photo that was being circulated, but that did not indicate which polling station. And it didn't look like the setup for the current EC uh, registration centers. But moving on, we've seen videos of some of these areas, Big Base uh, and a few other places where people are not adhering to social distancing protocols. Does this disturb the EC and what are we doing about it? See, for the first place, we have 3,500 registration centers. Now, we, we came up with a statement because we realized that there were videos circulating, mm. you know, um, they, 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 and some pictures as well. And if you take some of them, you look at them critically, you realize that, no, this is not a registration, typical registration center. Now, we, we indicated that for most of the registration centers, the people were adhering to the safety protocol, you know. Mm. But they were social distancing. Yes, we realized that most people were social distancing. But some places, we also realized that they were not adhering to the safety protocol, you know, no social distancing. Mm. They, were, they, were, they, were, they were too close to each other. And we are going around, monitors are going around to check all these things. And um, these are people who are supposed to be um, 18 years and above. Mm -hmm. And um, we just want to believe that going forward, you know, we have to adhere to the safety protocols strictly uh, in terms of social distancing. Mm -hmm. Because we have come out to put in the measures that we promised the electorate or the general public. We have put in the safety measures. We have brought in... Um, um, what do you call it, the Veronica buckets with soap and water. We have sanitizers and we are adhering to the safety protocols. Now the only issue is the way people want to get close to each other um, for, at some of the registration centers. But mm -hmm. that, that is not to say that it cuts across. There are videos, there are pictures I can show you after this interview that indicates that the um, for most of the people, they are adhering to the safety protocol, the rules of safety um, protocols. Mm. Okay, but but if yes, that's the I case, yeah. um, if that's the case, ma'am, then you're saying that you put in place some, um, you know, measures to ensure that people adhere to the safety protocols. Were these for the inner perimeter only? Because did we not I, anticipate that me, there will be people crowding that, outside? Let me also say that. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, Madam Silviano. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Can you hear me, please? Hello? Okay, we're trying to connect to um, yes, Sylvia. Okay, she can, can hear me and she's back on. All right, what can I'm I, asking I, is I, that I, you mentioned that you put in place measures to ensure that people adhere to the safety protocols. Was this only for the inner perimeter? Did we also anticipate that people would crowd eventually, um, you know, outside of the polling centers? And what did we do in anticipation of that crowd? In the first place, let's talk about what has necessitated uh, the crowd. Now, we 
some for some people they they be want to believe that um that maybe the registration team may not get to their areas so this is like panic registration they want to move from their areas you know um the area that where they live actually mm -hmm. live cross over to other areas to register and that is one of the reasons we are having to battle with the numbers now we are collaborating with the security agencies to make sure that um they assist mm. in enforcing the safety protocol but let me also say that um we are not expected to adhere to the safety uh, protocol um rule of social distancing only at the registration centers okay now if you gather you are about 100 100 people and you are not social distancing the police have the right to deal with you you know okay so we are liaising with them these are teething problems that we are having and we want to encourage applicants to move to the areas where they are supposed to register to decongest some of the areas now from the second day uh, on the very first day we started issuing the chip system using the chip system where after a number of uh, people have registered during the day mm -hmm. those who are unable to go through the process are given special numbers okay. to come the following day to join the queue you know from the so that when they come the following day, they are not supposed to join the queue from the back. Mm. They can only be in front because of the numbers they have been given. Okay. Now, this is a way of decongesting the registration centers. The, public the publicity has gone down well. We just want to encourage Ghanaians that we are going to um, conduct the registration at all the 33,267 registration centers throughout the country mm. so we must exercise some kind of patience for all the, right you're talking the about traffic. the chit system so then what's the limit how many people get that chit to indicate that they can join the queue the next day and so what's the limit per polling center we are expecting to register an average of 100 people a day some go beyond it it depends on the um the officials themselves you know how quickly they are able to you know go through the process with the applicants. Mm. Now, if you you are able to register about 100 people and you find about 120 people in the queue, probably you allow them to register. Probably you can take care of them. Because some register about 140 something, 130 yeah. something, which is okay. But some are a bit slow. And let me use this opportunity to encourage all applicants to download the Form 1A, you know, mm. uh, and as well as the guarantee forms from our website on www.ec.gov.gh okay now, if you are able to download these forms then you it means that you have to fill them accordingly before presenting them and that um would fast track the the process and make sure that you go through the process mm. within a few minutes some are able to go through six minutes some 10 minutes depending on the scenario now if you are unable to download mm -hmm. and you want to go to the registration center as an applicant to register um, you can write your name legibly on the um, on the sheet of paper and the, your other details as well and present them to the, uh, them to the um, officials in charge okay. does that give sure... you the chance to cross the line in any way no no we have to be in the queue okay if you don't want the confusion. All right. Now, the yes, Ghana Medical yes, Association yes. also released a statement along with some 113 concerned health workers. And they had uh, earlier cautioned the EC about the likely increase in case counts if we should go ahead with, um, you know, the voters register compilation. Did that get to you on time? And did you consider any of these things, the concerns that they raised? And moving forward, is that really playing a role in how you're managing the issue of crowding at the various polling centers? Remember that we have been mandated by law mm. to conduct the registration exercise. Okay. We cannot but go ahead with the registration exercise because we have been mandated. We are supposed to register Ghanaians so that they can vote come December 7th. Absolutely. But now, the GMA says need... that they would hold the EC responsible if we should experience an no, astronomical let me, let me, increase. Let me build up my, my, my case. Okay. Now, we, we have been, we have been man, mandated by law. And for that reason, we have put in safety measures because we believe that we are not in normal times. 
And that is the reason we have put in safety measures to make sure that we are all safe. Now, these are, um, we started registration on the 30th. Mm -hmm. Now, this is day three. There is some kind of improvement. And looking at the other side of the, of the picture, now, because of the registration exercise, we are able to identify persons whose temperatures are way beyond the limit. Segregate them and let them go through the process. So, in a way, the Electoral Commission has been able to identify or is able to identify persons whose temperatures are high. And for that matter, who have a um, identified people who are um, who are carrying the virus mm. to be able to deal with them to avoid um, the spread of the, the pandemic. But not all now, people so with high way, temperatures are positive for COVID-19, as the health professionals exactly. have said. And uh, there may be some who may not have high temperatures, mm -hmm. but might still be carrying the virus. Those are more like asymptomatic patients. How do we identify yes, so, such cases as well? Yes, we, we remember that we, we have indicated several times that we are liaising with the um, Ghana Health Service. So at every registration center, you find the health uh, officer, a nurse, or any person from the Ministry of uh, Health, mm. you know. And these are the people who take the temperatures of all applicants. So okay. before you proceed, now, um, I forgot one thing. There are mobile vans going around, you know. Mm. Who are they? Who are who's utilized to, to assist the registration um, teams? Okay. So that if the numbers are built up in a particular area, they call in the mobile vans to come in and assist. Assist in what way exactly? Assist in uh, with registering. Okay. The applicant. And that's a way of decongesting the registration centers, apart from the fact that we have brought in the police to assist in enforcing the rule of social distancing. Mm. Now, again, coming back to the issue of those who have been, um, whose temperatures are high, but they are not necessarily COVID-19, you know, um, they are not carrying the virus. If it's malaria, they have the tendency of knowing that this is malaria you know, and so on and so forth. So in a way, if you look at it from that direction, there's a school of thoughts that the EC is assisting in identifying people who have the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm. And we have the responsibility. All right, now... And so you can vote on okay. the same Now, there have also been some challenges with the printing of the ID cards because we're getting reports that some of the cards don't bear the ID numbers. There are some places where the biometric machines, um, you know, have failed. I remember we had a pilot at some point just to ensure that we can fix some of these challenges before we start the compilation proper. How is it then that we're still facing some of these challenges and how are we fixing them? Um, it's surprising that some, but let, let's look at the larger picture. Now, there may be speculation that some of the machines are not working. How many machines are not working? And what really, if they are not truly working, what happened, you know, to the, the machines? What has happened to them? For example, if you get to buy a new blender, maybe there's a way of moving. Maybe you have to go through a process to make it work. And probably you are not doing something right. That might account uh, for it not working properly. We have mm. technical teams all around um, in all the districts so that if there are any technical issues, they can quickly move in and have them rectified. Mm. Now, the registration, the, the, largely all the kids are working. You know, all the kids are working. If there are any problems, they are dipped in the bath quickly to avoid, you know, the problem of people queuing and having to go through them. So that if people speak about the fact that uh, the machines, some of the machines are not working, we want them to zoom in to the exact registration center. So we follow up and know exactly what has happened. And the mm. commission has given a stern warning to officials who may want to tamper with the machines to create problems for the electoral commission. And there are repercussions for that. 
Okay. The, the president was crystal clear when he uh, commented during his address that we cannot use the school premises across the country for other activities. And he cautioned, um, you know, everybody about that. But we've also come across some schools that serve as polling centers, uh, so much so that even with the crowd outside, students have to struggle to get into um, their classrooms because they are contending with other registrants. So in this case, are we not exposing these children uh, to danger? Um, I once again, um, we cannot make any we cannot make any kind of generalization on this issue. There may be isolated cases where there may be problems, and we would want to zoom in to those areas. For example, maybe. N A primary school, this mm -hmm. and that, and so so and so, there was a problem, and then you give a proper description of what happened, so we can zoom in, because during registration and other activities of the electoral commission, there are speculations. Now you may want to zoom in to the the facts and figures, you know, and make sure that if there are any problems, you have them rectified. And okay. I can assure you that we we honestly wouldn't want to go contrary to any any um rule mm. or any instruction that has been given more especially when it is coming from the presidency okay but that was one of the schools that we just showed um and this was clearly an indication that the students were struggling um to enter whilst others were also struggling to get into register as well and so that was what i was referencing um because clearly in the first place, uh -huh. sorry go ahead i mean I, first, i'm done in the first place you, you I mean, all of us have to social distance. We we don't have to struggle about anything. You know, the officials, they are supposed to enforce uh, in collaboration with the police, the safety protocols. So that mm. if somebody is struggling, it means that they are getting too close to each other. And that is not what we want, you know, as a commission to happen. So we going forward, um, if we have any teething problems, we need to solve them quickly before we move ahead. We have a long way to go. The registration, this is about the third day of the mm. registration. And we just want to believe that if we are able to identify some of these needing problems, we'll move in quickly to solve them so that we going forward, it will be very smooth. But I can assure you that the Electoral Commission is on top of what it is doing okay. across the length and breadth of the country. The registration is going very well, looking at the larger picture. And I just want to believe that we also have a role to play as Ghanaians, as applicants, so, so that we do not go contrary to the real rules and regulations that have been spelled out by the Electoral Commission okay. in the Ghana. Okay, that school was Big Bay Primary, and so I'd, I'd be happy if the EC can pay attention to that school and the many others that have also recorded such cases. But moving forward, uh, what I want to find out is there are a lot of Ghanaians who are still stranded outside the country. And yesterday, a conversation with a colleague, um, she mentioned that why can't we take advantage of the embassies in the various countries uh, to open up the registration centers so that they can also go in there and register because they don't want to be disenfranchised. I know the EC has made a point that they have plans uh, uh, to rope in these stranded Ghanaians in the other countries as well. What exactly is the plan and how soon can this be done, knowing very well that we have just a one month span for the compilation? I'm unable to immediately give you the, the plan of the EC, but um, very soon I think that we'll roll it out. Okay, all right. And how about down here as well? Could we not have taken advantage of the digitization to at least enable other people to also register online? so we can reduce the crowding at the polling centers. Was that conversation ever part of the planning? Remember that we have a law. Mm. We have a law on registration. And for that matter, we cannot go contrary to that law. And we have, remember also that we have party agents who are, um, at each registration center to make sure that the law is followed to the latter. Mm. Now, if you appear at the registration center, you must be a re you must be qualified. You must be a Ghanaian citizen of 18 years and above and of sound mind. The law doesn't give us the opportunity or the room to register online. We are not there yet. Mm. So for now, we have to stick to uh, CI 91 and CI. 126. But we're not in normal times. Could the law not have been tweaked a bit just to at least safeguard our health as well? Because a lot of people are likely to be at risk 
um, if they should join the crowd? That is the reason we have put in safety measures. So, okay. for instance, there are people, I saw an old lady um, with a shield on, with a face mask on, with a, a hand sanitizer spray, and you could see that she really meant business. Now, she, she, she wanted to register, and she did register. She went okay. through the process. Okay. Safely. So we can all replicate or try to do what she did. You know, mm. irrespective of the safety protocols that we have so put out at the various registration centers, when you are going to the registration center, you can pick your hand sanitizer, mm. be properly masked, and get to the center and register so you okay. can come out safely. All right, madam, before I let you go, one more question. There have been some allegations against party officials of busing, you know, their, uh, some of their people to various polling centers outside the constituencies where they should initially have registered. Uh, just to add on to the numbers, what does the law say? Is it okay to bus people, not necessarily because you want to add on the numbers, but just to support people to get to the various polling centers, especially because it may be too far from them? Is it allowed? Let me, let me tackle it from this angle. Now, the law says that before you register, you must be a Ghanaian citizen of 18 years and above and of sound mind, and you must reside in that particular area. Do mm. you get me? Yeah. Or you must come from the must hill from that area. You must come from that particular area. So I, for for us as officials of the electoral commission, I wouldn't know. I, I may not know whether somebody has been passed. What I do know is that the person is at the registration center to register. Now I also have a responsibility as a Ghanaian citizen to challenge anybody who is not qualified. Mm. And yeah. busting, you know. Um, if you, you the, the word bus, it means that people are crowded in the bus. Mm. That is a perception. Mm. And we are now social distancing. Even in vehicles, we are supposed to, we are not supposed to be close to each other. So if you are too close, if you, are, you have, if you bus people, there's a, there's a tendency that they may be too close to each other. You may be flouting alone. That is not for the EC to handle. That would mm. be for the police to handle. Okay. What we do know is that if you make yourself available at the registration center to register, you have to go through the process. If you don't qualify, then somebody has to challenge you. Okay. All right. Uh, Madam Sylvia, no, thank you so much for speaking to us. I wish we could continue, but time will not allow us. But it's been a pleasure. And uh, we wish the EC the very best as we move along. And hopefully, we'll have a smooth compilation. Definitely. Definitely. All right, Madam Sylvia Anor is the PRO for the Electoral Commission. And so just remember as well that as guarantors, you cannot guarantee for more than 10 people. The law will come after you if you do so. And so your limit is just 10 people. Go out there, make sure you're wearing your nose mask, adhere to the social distancing protocols, and please allow the security to do their work. If you don't have the chit with the number, stay at home or at least get it and go back home till it's time for you to go back and register. It's